Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Gokane from SBU StarCraft and today I'm gonna bring you a very special match rather a series of matches from a replay pack posted by Team Liquid on their Team Liquid Weekly and these replays consist of none other than Slayer's Boxer, otherwise known as Man of Way nowadays in StarCraft 2 versus Team Liquid's very own Liquid Jinro and we see that he, it's written in Korean, that's because the, Jinro is in Korea at the, right now and competing on the Korean ladder. So this is going to be a very, very cool match as Boxer is probably the most popular, most well-known Brood War player ever. And indeed, even before I played StarCraft, I knew of this guy. And he is such a legend and it's fantastic to see him in StarCraft 2. And really, that goes for all of the old Brood War legends that are coming into SC2 now. Brood War is such a mature and developed game at this point that it, I feel like it, it's in the best interest of these pros, these old pros that are either retired or somewhat diminished in the current Brood War scene to move on to SC2 as there is so much money to be made in StarCraft 2. Recently, the GSL competition, cool, a fruit dealer, my god, he is so good, and he just made $90,000, so there is a ton of money for players to make in StarCraft 2. And really, these old StarCraft 1 professionals, they are the ones who revolutionized Brood War, and I feel like they can do the same for StarCraft 2. So let's get back to the action anyway, and general we have scouting in north first we'll be seeing boxers main we're gonna be getting a very quick scout on boxer as this is a four player map metalopolis and boxer opting to go to the left position and we'll be getting to general's main very late we can see that general indeed did scout the zelnog and watchtower to see if boxer lifted his command center and flew it to the middle for the gold expansion so that is a, one of the several tactics that you, Terran can actually employ on this map. And here we have a Boxer getting an early second refinery. Jinra on the other hand starting his factory first. And Boxer gonna be putting down a reactor, gonna be some, seeing some heavy marine play. And at these close positions on a Metalopolis, it could either be a mass marine play with a dropship to land, or perhaps now that Boxer has started his factory, so he could be getting out a siege tank as well and be doing a siege tank marine push. Jinra on the other hand did start his factory earlier, lifting up the barracks and putting that tech, uh, tech lab down so that the factory can lift off and switch for the tech lab. Going to be probably producing, be producing the siege tanks pretty soon. Boxer's SCV late trying to get inside Jinra's base. General will not have it as his two marines do deflect it off. General actually going for a Hellion, and uh, that is surprising. Going to be getting Infernal Pre-Igniter, and this is this is quite a different play than we've been seeing usually from in Terran versus Terran. Terran versus Terran, the most dynamic and probably developed m mirror match of all three races. I had I'd have to say, and that's because. In Terran vs. Terran, you could use such a variety of units and such a different diversity in opening strategies and tactics employed. Unlike other races, I feel like the other mirror matches are somewhat more bland. And here we have a starport going down for General and Boxer getting out of Siege Tanks, gonna be pushing out now with his Marines and Siege Tanks. Siege Tank not yet completed, but already rallied to the position over here. One siege tank looks like about eight or so marines gonna be pushing into Jinro's base. Boxer does get his SCV taken out. Jinro with only four four marines and four um, four or so Hellions. One Hellion just on the way and three Hellions already made with that pre-igniter already done. Just starting siege tank siege mode research right now. I don't know if Jinro can hold this push as he is. These Hellions are not gonna be able to do much damage on the siege tank, but he is getting down a dropship to do a harass onto Boxer's base, but this is going to be distracting General as his main is now being threatened from the front 
with the siege tank and marine push. And general also going to be trying to scout <laughs> into Boxer's main, but this siege tank is just going to eliminate that SCV immediately. And actually, general going to be carrying out this drop. And this is going to be a very tricky play right now, as General's siege mode is not yet complete, but his siege tank is done. Dropping Hellions in the main, Boxer does not have anything to defend this, just one Viking. And this could be huge, two Vikings, but the Vikings are not going to be able to do too much damage, and the, the SCVs come close together, and four pre-igniters, pre-igniters just laying waste to the SCVs, Boxer taking so much damage. Boxer down to 10 harvesters, and these Vikings trying to, trying to pick off this Hellion, uh, this Venomac right here, but they are not in ground mode. These Hellions are taking out the rest of this, these SCVs. Boxer down to three SCVs at this point, and this is huge. Boxer just has this one contain while Jinro's economy is doing superbly. Boxer left with one SCV while Jinro has 28. 28 Boxer had to cancel his expansion that he was making as he was putting down this contain. And Jinro, Jinro, phenomenal play using these positions to his advantage, doing still carrying out that dropship harass with the Hellions, even though his front was being threatened by a marine tank push. Phenomenal play, and that, ladies and gentlemen, just most likely has secured Jinro the win in this game, as it is going to be near impossible to come back from a such a deficit right now. If we look at the supply, we have 30 supply for a boxer consisting almost entirely of attacking units and 57 supply for general. Boxer did call down a couple of his mules, but I don't think that will be quite enough to get back economically, economically in this game. General does have the lesser Viking force, and, that, and as we see, Boxer is able to get higher vision of the tanks, being able to take out that one tank over here. But Reactor on his starport is going to be able to allow, going to be able to let him produce more Vikings. And these Vikings taking shots off on these Vikings, which are put into hold position. These Vikings taking so much damage. Jinro now having the Viking advantage. Three Vikings to none at this point. Two Vikings coming in, but still. Jinro does have the advantage in Vikings and now has that siege tank and range the site to back it up. Bringing in SCVs, trying to heal this tank. This tank is going to be blocking up this push right here from the Marines. And the SCVs also def also repair the Viking. These Marines trying to do some damage into the main of Jinro, but I do not think that Jinro will be in any danger right now. I don't think that Boxer will be able to take this. I don't, uh, Boxer most likely will not be able to break this defense by general right now as he is so far below in harvesters economy and just general right now phenomenal play with that dropship press secured him the win now he's just cleaning up gonna be trying to macro this supply depot is going down but he brings th uh, three scvs to repair that not even that is going to be going down and boxer down to eight units eight units and general even sneaking a barracks into boxer's main gonna try to produce Marines out of here to do a backdoor assault on Boxer. Does Boxer see this? No, he does not see this. And Hellion coming from the front to try to harass, but this Viking going to be taking care of that. And right now, General taking his expansion. Going to be making tanks soon, and very soon he's going to be able to push back. This barracks being repelled has to lift off and go back into General's main. General throwing down two more bar uh, barracks after that, has three barracks total. Gonna be probably doing a push very soon, three tanks for him with two Vikings. While Boxer only has one tank and one Viking in ground mode, ground mode for defense. Boxer making his command center, but at this point I don't think it matters as it, this game is just being dragged on at this point with General as the clear cut winner in my opinion. General getting down his engineering bay, going to probably be getting the upgrades for his infantry units and tech labs coming in for all three barracks. Going to probably be seeing marauders soon in case um, Boxer tries to defend with more siege tanks. Mass marauder will be quite effective against that since mass marauder is so good against small numbers of tanks. Or rather, I mean, small numbers of marauders are actually very good against small numbers of tanks. 
and the general comes in, sieging up on Boxer's front door. Three siege tanks, four SCVs to defend, and four Vikings. Boxer has just one Viking, along with two other Vikings that just came out. But these Vikings are taking so much damage, are forced to go into ground mode. That Viking just getting obliterated by those tanks, and GG! Boxer GG's to Jinro, who, with spectacular play, not relenting with that dropship harass. And really, that was the perfect time for Jinro to do that harass, as Boxer's units were all lined up over here. Barely any defense back in Boxer's main, and that was just phenomenal play. Kudos to Jinro, and... Good luck in the next game. We will have that replay very soon. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen.